Hi, welcome back, and this is our final installment on vectors. Okay, vector addition by the component method. This is more precise than graphical, and I think it's easier. So let's get going. So our first step, it's called resolving vectors. It's breaking our vectors into their component parts. A previous video told us how to compute our components. Uh, just as a reminder, the x components it's the vector magnitude times the cosine of the angle, and it's the cosine of the polar angle. And the y component is the vector magnitude times the sine of the polar angle for the vector. The next step is you add the x components together, the x component of A plus the x component of B plus the x component in C, and so on for as many vectors as you are adding together. And that gives you the x component of the resultant. The next step is to add together the y components. y component of A plus y component of B plus y component of C and so on. And that gets uh, you the resultant's y component. If you are subtracting a vector, you just subtract the component. OK. Here's your multiple choice. What are the x and y components of the velocity 5 meters per second at a polar angle of 35 degrees? Next up, once you have the components of the resultant, we have to put the vector back together. And that's called composing. Taking them apart is called resolving. Putting them back together is called composing. To find the magnitude of the resultant, you use the Pythagorean theorem. The magnitude of the vector has these absolute value signs. That's the symbol for magnitude of the vector is equal to the square root of the sum of the x component squared and the y component squared. That gives you the magnitude. The next step is to find the angle that the resultant makes. And we are looking for the polar angle. Okay, It's the inverse tangent of the y component divided by the x component. And you need to be careful because this will give you, if you just put this into your calculator, you will get what we call the reference angle. You need to know what the polar angle is. So we did some practice on this uh, a little while ago, but I will give you an example using, using the Cartesian uh, graph, the xy coordinates. Okay, let's say we have our resultant vector is over there. And how would I know that? Well, my x component would be negative and my y component would be positive. So I would take the inverse tangent of a positive number divided by a negative number. This is a negative number our calculator would spit out a negative angle, okay, a negative theta, and it would be that angle there, x component, y component. Okay, but we don't want this angle, we want the polar angle. Counterclockwise, from the positive x-axis. So what do we do? Well, what we have is the negative x-axis is 180 degrees, and we have a negative angle, which just means that we're going clockwise from the x-axis. So we would just add whatever theta, whatever comes out of the calculator. Okay, so 100. 80 degrees plus theta. It's a negative number, so you're going to get something less than 180 degrees. If you were over in the third quadrant, you would get a positive angle. 
How would you know you're in the third quadrant? Well, your x component is negative and your y component is negative. When you do your inverse tangent, you would be taking the inverse tangent of a negative over a negative, gives you a positive, get a positive angle. You have to remember to add 180 degrees. If you have this angle, you have to add 180 degrees to get the proper polar angle. Fourth quadrant, you have positive x, negative y, you get a negative angle, you get this angle here, you add 360. So fourth quadrant is 360 plus theta that comes out of your calculator. Quadrants 2 and 3, add 180. Quadrant 4, add 360. It's a little bit to remember, but we have to do it. Next, here's a practice problem. In a daily prowl through the neighborhood, a cat makes a displacement of 120 meters due north, followed by a displacement of 70 meters due west. Find the magnitude and displacement required if the cat is to return home. Okay, magnitude and replacement if the cat is required is required if the cat is to return home. Okay, so I like to sketch these. So the cat goes 120 meters due north. Okay, I'm gonna just call that vector A. And then it goes 72 meters due west. Okay, and I want to know what direction the cat needs to do to go home. Well, the resultant of A and B is here. That tells me the displacement of the cat from home. But I don't want to know that. If you remember last video, um, I told you something about a vector called the equilibrant. The, and in this case, I really want the equilibrant. I want to return to zero. So I actually want negative r. It doesn't really change how we start the problem. I need to find the x and y components of a, and I need to find the x and y components of b add them together, then I need to put them back together. Okay, so how do we do this? So I start by making a table. I make an X column, I make a Y column. And I have vector A, vector B, we add them together, and that gives us our resultant. So vector A, well, the components of vector A, the angle that A makes with the positive x-axis is 90 degrees. The angle that B makes with the positive x-axis is 180 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate my components. Vector A. Vector A's length is 120 meters. 120 meters times the cosine of 90 degrees. And the Y component is 120 meters times the sine of 90 degrees. And without a calculator, I know that the x component is 0 and the y component is 120. You're not always going to be able to do this without a calculator. But check it out. Check the calculator and see if I'm right. Vector B. Vector B has a length of 72 meters. 72 cosine of 180 degrees. And the y component, 72 sine of 180 degrees. 
Well, I know the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. So my x component of b is negative 72. And my y component, well, the sine of 180 degrees I know is 0. So that's 72 times 0 is 0. I add my x column up, negative 72. I add my y column up, 120. Those are my x and y components. And those are in meters. Now, I have my components. Now I have to compose my resultant vector. Or I could do the equilibrant step. I want negative r. Negative r is equal to 72 minus 120. So let's start with that. 72 minus 120. So the magnitude is equal to the x component squared plus the y component squared. And that's equal to 72 squared plus 120 squared. I know that if I'm squaring negative 120, that it's going to give me a positive number. To avoid problems in my calculator, I just automatically turn that into a positive number. Do it however you're comfortable doing it from math class. And I'm going to pull up my calculator so that I can do this. Okay. So, turn it on, second, square root, 72 squared, plus 120 squared, close the parentheses, hit the enter button, and it says it's 139.94, I'm just going to call that 140, going to live dangerously here, this is equal to 140 meters. We're not done. We have to find the angle. To help me decide what my angle is going to be, I'm going to actually just plot this coordinate point roughly 72 minus 120. Go out 72, come down 120. That means my final vector is located in the fourth quadrant. That means that I'm going to take the angle that comes out of the calculator and add 360 degrees. So let's set that up. So equals 360 degrees plus the inverse tan of the y component, which is 120, over the x component, actually it's negative 120 because we're looking for the equilibrant, and the x component is 72. Let's bring up our friendly neighborhood calculator again. Okay, so we have 360 plus inverse tangent of negative 120 divided by 72. And that gives us 301 degrees. Okay, I have this scratch, you know, written down here. It's a little bit messy, so I'm going to bring it over here and say negative r is equal to 140 meters at an angle of 301 degrees. And that's my answer. Here's your free response. So our cat is on the prowl again. Good luck. We'll see you next time.